So here's my 2009 BBR MM12P. A lot of you guys have been asking me to do a video of this build and an update on it since it's been so long. I got this bike about three years ago now and part of the reason why it took so long to get the build done is mostly just because finding the parts are like nearly impossible. I got this as just the frame. Um, didn't have much with it. It came with a super pro swing arm that I ultimately sold for this swing arm but I tracked down a lot of the parts I was lucky enough to get my hands on everything I needed so BBI recently came out with some new parts to run this Daytona 190 motor including the brake pedal the lower foot peg mounts and most recently this um, Kickstarter so I put that on there so the bike is pretty much how I want it so part of the reason why it took me so long to make this video is because like I said tracking on the parts was hard and then waiting on BBR to come out with the updated parts that I was waiting for to complete it. I just switched to the TerraForce front tire today from the larger size Midas and the IRC. I tried and tested out both of them. I ended up going with this one just because on these BBR works warp clamps they're not wide enough so you can't really run the wide front tire without them hitting the inside right here so I did away with the wide tire and ran this ultimately this is going to be better for turning anyway because you don't want too wide of a front tire the IRC front tire that we all run is actually a rear tire so a lot of things changed on this bike since my last video I honestly can't even remember where I left off there but so much things changed so let's just start with the obvious we got a Daytona 190 in it now originally we we're gonna go with the uh, 184 that I built or is actually a 194 but I decided to go with the Daytona 190 just because I'm gonna be I was gonna be racing it which I have been and doing good on it so went with the Daytona 190 just because that's what everyone's running nowadays it's bone stock nothing done to it I just did a custom BBR header with that this is the Daytona 190 header that they sell I welded the mounts on for the uh, carbon fiber heat shield and then welded on the BBR D3 muffler took out the insert because I wanted to let it flow as much as possible and open it up and let it rev out so that's why I took that out like I said I welded the muffler on there still running the DNM shock I'm thinking about upgrading to an Alka not sure yet my plan is to possibly sell this swing arm and extend my super comp the super comp is the original swing arm that came on uh, this bike this is actually number 35 of I believe 200 that BBR produced in 2009 in 2010 they were discontinued so haven't had a problem with that shock like I said I'm thinking about extending the swing I'm gonna run a different shock in the red shock block this one here is equivalent to the medium shock block that they have but overall I like the setup I'm gonna try it with the TerraForce I haven't rode it yet with that on there as you can see I get the carbon fiber on there pretty sweet this light speed cover took me to forever to find as well as the brand new pro circuit Sierra 50 shifter these are the updated mounts like I mentioned a little a couple minutes ago there BBR came out with these about two years ago or maybe like a year and a half ago I got those just recently welded up the Daytona intake manifold so I could run the BBR U-Flow just to make it easier to get the air filter on and off right here before it was hitting the frame spar a lot of these guys that have the MM12P frame um, they ended up trying to run it in there, but it ends up hitting the header or it's right here So that opens it up nice. I think that looks good I mean, what do you guys think would, would you rather have it near the hot part of the header and like bending down in here Pushing the carburetor in or keep it away from the header. So that's why I went that route So obviously the motor we went over that we did the updated under pedal BBR Kickstarter I did this took me forever to find too. This was actually custom made because they're discontinued that's a golfer rotor the BBR style one the front one I was able to get off a friend of mine used actually no it was new he had it so that's the BBR one there so I had to get the rear made to match that's another thing that took a while 
We got the Gen 2 Zokes. The relief valves. I like to run those. Just don't press them when the bike's on the ground. We got DLC coated fork tubes. I just did the fork seals and I did the fork oil, obviously. She sounds awesome. I'm going to start her up for you guys right now. Let you hear a bark. We got the D3 on there. Like I said, opened up, no insert. So she's going to sound good. And I'm running the, don't forget the carb, I got the PE28 Keenan carb with a 48 pilot jet and a 118 main jet. We got the factory MM12P oil cooler. Really nice touch right there. Keeps that Daytona cool. I was thinking about running a dual on this side, but the problem with that is the BBR U-Flow would be in the way. I'd have to run like a half size one maybe. Let's start this thing up, let you hear it bark. Let's see if she wants to start first kick for me. Start it up first kick. Let's get it. up too much he's not warmed up there it is what do you guys think of that we're gonna get this thing some graphics soon maybe we'll come out with the extended super comp and an Elka shock, that'd probably be the next thing that I'm trying to do. I'll got, let you guys know what I think of the new Terra Force front tire that's on here now. Pretty excited to run that. The front number plate and front fender is from uh, KTM 65. I believe it was uh, 2016 or 2018. Fitment on the back's good too. Looks pretty sharp. This throttle right here is just a cheap eBay one. It's actually not that cheap. I think I paid like 60 bucks for it. But I have them on a couple of my bikes and I haven't had any problems with them. So I've just been running them. So the skid plate is also from BBR. It's called the Team Edition. Fits really good on there. They put the rib in the front of it to make it stronger because a lot of the other ones tend to crack right, right here. So that's why they did that so far it's been held, holding up strong haven't had any problems with it so something that a lot of people do and something I recommend doing with these MM12P frames if you're going to be running the heavier Daytona motor is having these motor mounts reinforced Dwayne over at BBR can take care of it for you uh, the frame has to be reheat treated so it's quite a process you're going to have to take it all down send it up I shimmed out the, let me see on the other side so I don't know if you can see in there but I shimmed this out so that way when you tighten down this bolt right here it's not like squeezing it at all and pinching that's usually what causes them to crack they usually crack like right along here because it pinches in so that's the benefit to having the frame reinforced right there and then reheat treated I have like I said I've got lucky so might send it out this winter to have that done works connection lever this is just an eBay brake master cylinder works good I have no problem with those this is the Zuma 50 front caliper get those off of eBay 
they're pretty cheap if you have any problems with them you just buy another one for like thirty dollars so not too bad the BBR factory style chain guide these are the BBR IMS Pro foot pegs and then pretty cool feature that you can add to the KLX 110s or your perimeter frames is this piranha under brace and then we got the DNM shock on there I'm running a 30 or not 32 a 42 and a 15 in the front that's good for big MX tracks I like to ride in like third gear fourth gear I start in second gear and then just go from there you got the hour meter on there so looking pretty sweet. sweet in the comments don't forget to like comment subscribe share this video and turn the notifications on if you want to stay up to date with my videos we're going to be coming back with some more very soon thanks for watching